the, we're almost, we're halfway through with our contest. The next contestant who is exercising her biceps right now is Sarah Dumont. You guys know the comments earlier that seem to be in question. Just trying to give you guys some harmless entertainment between presenters. We'll continue. Right. Hello, so, my name on. is Sarah Dupont. I'm a third year medical student. I am currently on the wards. And I'd like you to imagine this. You're in your clinic one afternoon, and a patient hobbles in, clearly in pain, says, Doc, I've got this huge swollen red knee and it's killing me. What's going on? Well, this is actually a very common complaint, and one that I want you to be comfortable with. So the purpose of this talk is first to demonstrate how to work through a differential diagnosis or something like acute monoarthritis, and second, to teach you as future practitioners something about acute monoarthritis so you can make the correct diagnosis and move on to the correct treatment. While I'm talking today, there's a couple of points that when you leave this room today, no matter what, I want you to remember. The first of these, when you're building a differential diagnosis, you need to think of two things. What is most common and what do you absolutely need to rule out? So let's talk about acute monoarthritis. What's most likely behind this complaint? Trauma, crystals, this is gout and pseudogout, osteoarthritis, and gonorrhea. And what do you absolutely need to rule out when you see something if you see a painful joint? Non-gonococcal septic arthritis. Septic arthritis builds up pus and bacteria in a joint that can destroy the structures in a matter of hours. You need to identify these patients and you need to give them a treatment right away. So you've crafted your differential diagnosis. Next, you need to ask yourself, who is my patient? What are their risk factors? So for something like trauma, they might be unsteady. They can be elderly, have a history of falls. Or they may be a weekend warrior going and doing extreme sports that put them at risk of injury to their joints. For crystals, you might think of someone who's male, overweight, has diabetes, hypertension, high alcohol intake. For osteoarthritis, maybe they have a history of repetitive stress to their joint. Or maybe they've been diagnosed with osteoarthritis before. It's kind of a freebie. For gonorrhea, it's someone who would be young and sexually active. It's actually the most common cause of acute monoarthritis in that population. For non-gynecocal sepsis, they maybe have a prosthetic joint, or they've had recent surgery to the joint, or recent surgery to a prosthetic joint. That would put it very high on the differential. After you consider your patient's risk factors, you then move on to actually talking to your patient. Ask them, tell me the story of how this presented. What happened? For trauma, you should be hearing something about how they injured it. They remember a pop, they fell off of a height. Or there should be a reason that they don't remember it. Maybe they're an alcoholic, they went on a binge one weekend, they woke up in a puddle of vomit and their knee hurt. <laughs> For something like crystallopathy, they may describe hours, maybe days of building pain. And it's likely something that's happened to them before. For osteoarthritis, Perhaps they're going to describe uh, that they've had achy knees for a while now that's worse later in the day. And if you tease out the timeline of this a bit more, maybe it's not so acute, maybe subacute. This has actually been building over the course of weeks, to, it maybe just days, and it's kind of more of an acute flare up. For gonorrhea, they might describe recent joint pain in different joints, kind of a migratory arthritis picture. They might also describe sexually transmitted infection symptoms like discharge, itchiness, or burning. For non gonococcal sepsis, it's not terribly specific, but you're talking about six to 12 hours of building, burning, pain, and heat, and kind of limited range of motion. All right, so now we've talked to our patient. It's the exciting part. We move on to physical exam. But this brings me to the second point that when you leave here today, I absolutely want you to remember. When you're doing a physical exam, look at the whole body for clues. You're cheating yourself if you're just looking at the knee. There's all sorts of things that you can find in different locations. For example, when you're looking at trauma, perhaps they'll have scrapes or bruises. You will likely will see an effusion of the knee, but you could see hints to the source of their in injury in other locations. For crystallopathy, classically the knee is described as 
exquisitely tender, kind of a buzzword on test, so you have to just keep it in mind. Uh, you also, if you look at other joints, especially behind the elbow and the back of the ear and on the toes and fingers, you can see deposits of the crystals. These are called toe finds. You can see them here. It can be very painful. They're very specific. Osteoarthritis doesn't have so many systemic manifestations. The knee itself should be cool because it's not an inflammatory process. And if you move the joint around, you're likely to feel crackling and popping. This is called crepitus. If you want to know what it feels like, go find an athlete in your class. <laughs> Gonorrhea, the knee itself will be red, hot, and painful. You might also want to look at the oral and genital mucosa. You'll see maybe lesions, signs of an infection. And if you look at the rest of the body, you might see signs of this disseminated gynecological infection. There can be this rash with these painful hemorrhagic pustules, especially on hands and on the feet, that can give you an idea of what's going on in the rest of the body. For non-gynecological sepsis, this knee is going to look pretty gross. Red, hot, tender. And they may have a systemic manifestation such as a fever. And again, it's going to be difficult moving the knee around for them. Okay, we've got the physical exam down. Now we move on to further diagnostic tests. Which brings me to my third and final point that I want you to remember when you walk away this evening. Imaging is not always the answer. It's actually not very useful for acute lumbar arthritis. X-rays are unlikely to find the source of your problem. If you really want to know what's going on in the knee, you need to aspirate the fluid. So the fluid inside of the joint is called synovial fluid. This is what healthy synovial fluid looks like. It's clear, you can kind of see through it, see something in the back of it. It looks nice and healthy, something you want inside your knee. In trauma, the fluid might be frankly bloody. And if you spin down that fluid, you're going to see a yellow layer on top. It's called xanthochromia. That's how you tell the difference between bleeding into the joint and you just kind of hit a few vessels in the way with the needle. You might see a few thousand white blood cells, but not that many. It's not a really inflammatory process. Crystallopathy, it is inflammatory. You can see tens of thousands of long red blood cells. You may actually see up to even 40,000 red blood cells. And it's going to be cloudy and it's going to look dark. And if you look at it under a polarized light, you're going to see crystals. But word of caution. Just because you see crystals does not mean there may not also be a bacterial infection in that joint. All that glitters is not crystals. Some of us have really bad luck and have bacterial infection and crystallopathy at the same time. So don't automatically forget about the bacterial sepsis. Osteoarthritis, again, non-inflammatory, not that many white blood cells, and it looks pretty healthy. It's pretty similar to your good synovial fluid that you started with. Gonorrhea, on the other hand, is going to produce a pretty nasty synovial fluid. It's bloody. It's kind of got pus in it. It's got tens of thousands of white blood cells. But if you gram stain it, you may not see gonorrhea. And even if you culture it, it may not grow. It only has about a 50% chance of growing out in culture. Gonorrhea is a pretty sneaky organism. For a non-gonococcal septic joint, again, it's going to look really just turbid and viscous, pussy, tens of thousands of white blood cells. And if you culture it, gram stain it, you are likely to get results. But don't wait for those results to put the patient in antibiotics. When you see something like this coming out of the knee, you need to act fast. So let's review. Remember what's common and what you need to rule out. Examine the whole body for clues. And imaging is not usually the answer. You need to aspirate the joint. And I'd like to thank everyone who supported me in this. And if you want to read more, check out American Family Physicians. <laughs>